Okay, first up we have recommended items. Quarm and Lantid I'm Incense Sticks for poison damage and potion duration. We have tank armor for animate dead. We also want an obsidian helm with an offering of Tockle for 19% damage reduction against everything but Zuck, as well as a charged Tockle Zoe for 10% more damage against everything but Zuck as well. We'll also want to bring a DPS familiar, such as a Ripper Demon with scrolls, or we can also bring a Beast of Burden for extra healing. You can bring both, but eventually, once you've got enough experience under your belt, you'll eventually just bring the one DPS, as you won't need the extra supplies. And also recommended, but not required, are Greater Chain and Corruption Blast. They greatly help with AoE, but they're not necessary to get your first kill. Now in the background, you see me heading to the Fight Cauldron to offer 15,000 Tockle per 20 minutes to get an extra 10% damage reduction for the Obsidian gear. It does apply with only one item, and it's 20 minutes per 15,000. You can stack up to an hour, but it is super helpful for getting through the 17 waves up to Zuck himself. Another thing you can do is, once you've popped your incense sticks, you can buy around an extra 7 or 8 minutes of supply time on your overloads and weapon poison just by taking any leftover doses that you have in your bank and popping them before you load your preset. A shield or defender will be required in order to complete the fight as you will need to barricade or resonance some of the mechanics. And I also highly recommend bringing adrenaline potions of some kind, just one flask is usually fine for me, in order to just squeeze in a little bit extra damage during some of the phases. Now, the spot that you're seeing me run to right now is a safe spot that I prefer to use. It's the southeastern corner, and you can use it for almost all the waves except for the first Jad wave. There is an alternative spot for that one, though. Your number one priority targets are the bats, similar to the way they were in the fight caves, only this time if you safe spot them, they'll tss on you, as you see right there, and it actually drains your health and prayer from range if it is safe spotted, so it's very highly recommended getting rid of them as soon as possible so you avoid going through too many supplies. Aside from the Igneous and the Challenge Waves, it's pretty much identical to the Fight Kiln or Fight Cave as you're used to. You just remember your southeastern safe spot and you kill the enemies as needed. The video is not a great example of this because I'm not trying to be careful and reduce my incoming damage, I'm trying to kill them as quickly as possible for the sake of the video. Now let's go ahead and accelerate this a little bit. We're going to skim forward until we get to wave number four, which will be our first igneous wave. Alright, so now we have our first igneous wave coming up. In normal mode, it's three mobs of the same type, and the first set are the melee mobs. The melee ones, in order to take damage without rapidly healing themselves, they need to be stunned by any ability that has a stun attached to it, whether it's a basic, threshold, or ultimate if a stunning ultimate exists. But you just hit them with the stun and then DPS them down. They've only got 25,000 health, so they're not too difficult to deal with. Once you've killed all three of the Igneous mobs, a button will show up on your screen for the special action button. That is the button that will stun Zuck and make him vulnerable. It'll also kill off all the rest of the mobs that you haven't killed up to this point, so don't worry about full clearing them if you don't have to. You can soul split off Zuck at this time, and you can also debuff him with whatever debuffs for taking more damage, whether it's Vuln Bombs or Smoke Cloud or something, but you can apply them before you press the button, like I'm doing here. Once you press the button, all you have to do is deal 50,000 damage. If you're not able to do it in one cycle, that's fine. You'll just have to kill the Igneous mobs one more time, and you'll pick up from where you left off. And especially when it comes to the third challenge wave, but the first and the second one as well, if you're struggling with them, 
It actually buys you a little bit more time to get your cooldowns and adrenaline set up so that you can be ready for those upcoming challenge waves. Now we have the first challenge wave coming up. Basically what happens is five volatile mobs will spawn and it's a DPS race to kill all five of them before their little special bars fill up. If you don't, then for every one that's left alive, they will explode and deal a large chunk of damage to your face. Greater Chain is a huge help here, but it's not a requirement. I didn't use it for my first kill, but unfortunately I didn't have it recorded so I can't show you but don't let that discourage you from trying to get your first flawless kill in order to unlock hard mode. Immediately afterward, we have our first Jad wave. You want a safe spot behind this rock in the northwestern corner so that when it spawns, it gets stuck behind the rock and it lets you deal with the rest of the mobs that spawn beforehand. Once you've cleared out all the other mobs, you just take on the Jad with your typical prayer flicking, and then you move on to the next waves. Starting with this wave, you'll run into your second primary target. It's the second range mob you'll run into, and it's larger and it's sort of spiky looking. It's got a little gimmick where the longer it stands still, the more damage it deals, so if you let them stack up, they can end up hurting quite a lot. You want to make sure to focus these after the bats if you can, and then if you really need to, you can range prey with devotion in order to mitigate most of their damage. It's pretty simple from this point until the next igneous wave. All you have to do is maintain your positioning in your southeastern safe spot and keep killing things starting with your priority targets and then the rest of the wave. And now we have our next igneous wave. In normal mode, that means we're up against an entire wave of ranged dudes, with some of them being slightly larger than the others. Their gimmick is you have to hit them with thresholds or ultimates in order to get them to stop healing, otherwise it's identical to the first igneous wave. And then here, same story as before, do your setup, press the button, 50,000 damage. And now for challenge wave number two. Still a DPS race like the first one, but now there's only one mob and he can only be dealt damage if you deal more than 3,000 damage in a single hit. And now we have the second Jad wave. Unlike the first one, the second and third Jad waves can actually use the southeastern safe spot that we've been using in order to separate the Jads from the rest of the mobs.
From this point forward, we start running into our third primary target. They're the large mage mobs, and what they do is occasionally when they hit you, they'll apply a 45 second damage over time debuff to you that stacks and is refreshed whenever you get a new stack. If you get too many of these, or if you finish the wave and need to heal off of Zuck or something, the way you get rid of them is by using freedom, and it'll get rid of all your stacks. After that, just back to the usual safe spot, kill things, safe spot, kill things. And now for Igneous Wave number 3, the mage variant of the Igneous Waves. These ones are pretty simple, they have a bubble, you stand in the bubble, hit them with an ability, the bubble pops, and they'll stop healing for a period of time. You do want to be a little bit careful with this last 50k because you want to make sure you have 100% available for barricade for the next challenge. The last challenge, as long as you have 100% adrenaline, is really easy. You just wait until the first mob throws the first projectile at you, and before it hits you, just barricade and you're good to go. As soon as that's done, you want to rush back to your southeastern safe spot because you're about to have a triple Jad wave. As long as you made it in time, two of the three should get stuck and you should be good to go to start working through all three. After the triple jad wave, you'll have a hurricane fight to deal with. Unlike the normal one in the fight kiln, he'll also be able to lob magma balls into the air. If you don't move two spaces away, they'll deal a little bit of damage to you, and they'll also reduce your adrenaline gain rate as well as the adrenaline that you have. And then also, the number of tentacles that he has spawned will give him flat damage reduction against all your attacks. And finally, occasionally it'll say he's bombarding you. It's just a big X of the magma orbs mentioned earlier. Just move in a straight line that isn't diagonal and you'll be just fine. And now we're on to the big guy. He has four different special attacks that he'll use in the same order every time, and he'll do three auto attacks in between each one in normal mode. When he initially jumps into the arena, he will hit you with the first one right away, which will put the same debuff on you that the mage guys did earlier, you just freed him to get rid of the burn. After that he'll do three auto attacks, followed by his second special attack, which will be a melee hit, which will deal a couple quick hits of magic damage afterwards, and it'll start draining your constitution level. It'll keep doing so until you've walked 15 spaces, and surging or 
escaping will work just fine. They'll add whatever space they carry you to that 15 target. This will reduce your max health, and it stays for a very long time, so just make sure you use a super restorer or two after you get that debuff off. Three auto attacks later, he'll say something like, Quake beneath me, and he'll hit the ground with his sword for a melee hit to you. At this point, the second that sword hits the ground, you want to make sure that you surge or walk underneath him, directly behind him, about halfway through the arena. That's the only way I've been able to fully avoid that special attack so far. And if you do get hit by it, it'll put that same debuff that the first one did on you for every tick that you're standing on the little quake spots. While it's not so bad in normal mode, it's almost a death sentence most of the time in hard mode. Once he's done that, he'll do three more auto attacks and then summon an orb from the sky that deals a lot of damage. It's at this point you want to equip your shield and resonate so that you don't take any damage from it, and then go back to your dual wield or staff camp and keep going. Up next, after the second or third auto attack, you're going to want to freedom or anticipate so that you don't get stunned when he goes into the next mechanic, where he will move you across the arena, and then start setting the ground on fire. It's at this point you'll want to run directly behind and just to the left of him, where he'll spawn the melee igneous mob, once you've killed that, then you'll want to go straight behind and just to the left of him again, and he'll summon the ranged igneous mob. And then once again, same story, only for the mage igneous mob. During this time after the mage one has been spawned, he'll start channeling a very large attack that is an instant kill. If you're not able to kill all three of the igneous things and use the special attack button to interrupt it, it will instantly kill you and you'll have to start the fight over. Luckily, in normal mode, you can start right off from the fight. In hard mode, you can also start right off from the fight again. You don't have to go back through all the waves if you die at this point. After that, he'll do three auto attacks and then start off with the first special attack he used and go through the same rotation again. Once you get him down to 100,000 health, his special attack rotation will reset back to the beginning. Other than that, the fight proceeds the same until you finally take him down. Hopefully this video was able to help some of you out and answer a couple of questions if you had any, and hopefully it's helped you get your first normal mode Zuck kill. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.